I, I have a radio voice. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. Hi, and hey. thank you for uh, coming on Defining Lead Generation for today's CRE Professionals. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to use social media uh, as well as blogging to generate leads. We, we got in this hot topic about lead generation, and uh, we have some amazing special guests with us here today. Uh, just a couple of quick house cleaning things. Uh, everybody is going to be in listen-only mode uh, besides the panelists. Um, so if you have any questions, you have a question box down in the bottom. Uh, feel free to ask questions, and we'll try to answer them throughout. Uh, don't uh, hesitate to ask a question, because if you have one, we want to answer it right away. Again, we're talking about lead generation, uh, how to generate leads, and these are some great ways you can generate leads at no or little cost to you to do so. And I really appreciate having everybody coming on uh, the session here today to do so. Uh, again, if you have questions, please let us know. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce some of the panels that are going to be on. They're going to be on through this whole session as well. Uh, and I'd like to start off with uh, Mr. Alan Buchanan, Lynn Drake, I got Christina Cohen, hey. Linda Day Harrison, Joshua Lyon, Hi, uh, Andrew Bermudez. Uh, looks like we have some other people on here as well. Uh, and, and again, we're going to be talking about different ways to use social media. And I'd like to bring up our first guest here we're going to be talking with is uh, Josh Lyons. Josh, are you on the mic with us here today? I am. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can, yeah, we can hear you great. Um, if anybody can't hear us out there, please let us know. Um, but it looks like everybody is able to hear us. So, Josh, you, you gave us a couple things when we had our, uh, our, our quick little meeting the other day. And, and you were talking about, you know, uh, different things to talk about blogging. And is blogging a waste of a time? Maybe you can kind of touch base a little bit more on that topic you're talking about. You know, a lot of people say, hey, you know, I blog or I want to blog, but is it really a waste of time? Am I generating any leads from that? Is it doing anything for me? Can you enlighten us on that? Yeah, absolutely. I actually have a really good story with that. Uh, I've been doing marketing since 2009 when I graduated from college uh, with public relations and marketing uh, studies. But since that time, I've learned what people need to do. And when I started working with uh, commercial real estate a little over a year ago for marketing for a commercial real estate company, I was working with this one firm. And I told them, I said, hey, what we need to do is we need to put together uh, a blog strategy. We need to blog consistently. You know what to talk about. You're the subject matter experts. Let's uh, get this going. So th there was uh, some participation. People said, OK, we'll go ahead and do this. But I had one advisor who said, they were like, okay, Josh, you know, I don't believe that blogging is really worth the time, but I'm going to play along. I'll go ahead and write blog posts on a schedule, but you're going to have to prove to me that it actually will generate leads, because if you can't prove it to me, I'm not going to keep doing it. So that was my challenge right there. And then I, I, I was like, okay, sure. I took the challenge. So after few months, two or three months, something like that of blogging once uh, once or twice a week, this person started showing up on Google. Previously, they weren't showing up on Google, but they started showing up on Google for the blog posts that they were writing. So I went and I said, hey, look at that. You're getting uh, website traffic specifically because you wrote these blog posts. And then after a while, they started to say, okay, yeah, I can see I'm getting web traffic. I don't know that these convert to leads, but okay, so I got some web traffic. And then, next thing you know, she put together so many blog posts, all on which she specializes in. I sent out an email to all of our investors uh, in an investor list, and I said, hey, look at all this stuff uh, that she has to say about business brokerages. And then next thing you know, she told me she got all these phone calls and actually got clients because of that email it sent out specializing all the stuff that she knows about business brokerage. And so from then on, she said, hey, I'm a complete uh, believer. If you need any blog, let me know. I'm there for you. And so she's become my biggest advocate for blogging, uh, which is, I think, a really, really great story of lead generation through both the website traffic and also through emailing uh, all of her blog posts out to investors. So that was a really good story. So, so uh, you know, with that, Josh, I wanted to kind of lean over on my uh, my pal Alan Buchanan. I like to pick on Alan, or maybe Linda could jump in, or or anybody. Lynn can jump in, Christina can jump in, Andrew, anybody jump in. But like, so blogging, you know, uh, with with what Josh has said, blogging can go ahead, and it's definitely not a waste of time, and he's proved it. 
But, you know, if I wanted to start in and get blogging, is there any is there any best practices? Where would I go to start a blog? What would I talk about? You know, what should I do? Uh, I know, I, I remember Alan from his infant, infant days where before he was blogging, and now he's a superstar, uh, you know, in newspapers and everything. Uh, you know, same with uh, with Linda. I remember when she first just started the broker list. So is there any anybody that can kind of take that topic and say, look, um, I want to get in, I want to be able to contribute, but where do I start and what should I do? Well, I think wow. my wife coined it, coined it yeah. best and she said that um, blogging is working out loud. And so if you think about, and, and we're all in, in, in similar professions, but some of us are in, in different professions. If you think about what we do every day and you break that down into finite steps, as an example, if, if you conduct a building tour, so you put a client in the car, you take them around, you show them five buildings. Uh, for those of us in the commercial real estate business, that's just something that we do every single day. It's something that we do by rote. But there could be things that we do that could be helpful to others in our business, could be helpful to others that might potentially be looking for a building. In other words, uh, I've, I've twisted that a couple of ways. I, I, I did a, a Tuesday traffic tip on uh, a way to conduct a building tour, and then I flipped it around and I said, what should you expect from your tour guide? In other words, if you're an occupant looking for space. And so that's an example of, of working out loud. And if you just take the time to say, here are the five things I do prior to uh, you know, a building tour. I wash my car. I put snacks in the back seat. I take my golf clubs out of the trunk. I uh, preview all the buildings. I have professional books ready and sitting on the front seat when the occupant gets in my car. You know, All of those things are items that, that we do that could be helpful. And also, if, if you reduce them to a blog, either a video blog or a written blog, then they become searchable. And uh, I, I believe, like Joshua was just saying, then someone is looking for touring commercial real estate, and guess what? Maybe you pop up on their Google search. Yeah, as far as how to do it, Matthew, I think in today's um, with t today's technology and tools, you can basically blog with absolutely no overhead and no technology of, of any kind. And, you know, you can do that through, uh, obviously, I, you know, I'm not just going to say the broker list, but that's one place, but LinkedIn and, you know, guest blogging, and you could be so lightweight and just simply, you know, make a commitment like Lynn has committed to. She's been doing it for years, and Alan, I'm going to write a blog every whatever, week or month or frequency, but I know Alan and Lynn are very dedicated, but they wouldn't have to have a blog to do it. They could still do it. You know, they have all kinds of platforms you can blog on. If that was your question, you know, you don't have to have your own physical blog. So, Lynn, what, what, what have you seen? Then, what have you seen work for you so far? And, like, what is your experiences? Well, I have one work just simply by putting my blogs out. Um, I am on about 40 different sites. And I've changed the way that I do things recently. Um, I used to do all geared towards the brokers because I wanted to be known across the country by other brokers because I do tenant representation. And now I'm kind of gearing, I, I'm changing my gear, I'm changing lanes a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on the CFOs now and organizations that CFOs are a member of. So I've kind of switched as I've gone along. But what happens for me is somebody, I'm, most of my business, 90% of my business is referrals and or they found me on the internet. And um, what they do is they read my blogs before I even get to the appointment. I, I'm not even selling. I'm walking to the appointment. I'm already hired. I'm told, oh, my gosh. So it, it helps sell your business. It helps get new clients. I, it's excellent. And uh, I, I've been doing it for five years. And I was sharing with Linda, I recently um, outsourced the work. I still do the writing, um, but my business has become such that I don't have time to manage that so much anymore. And um, that's actually working out really well for me um, because I think, frankly, I thought we were doing a good job, but a professional can do a better job for you, in my experience. Great. And do you have any outsourcing uh, places or tips or any place that someone can find if they wanted some help with outsourcing uh, for blog stuff? Uh, I me. Found, find out who we're using in my market. 
Yeah, Josh, yeah, you can hire Josh Lyons there. There you go, Josh, with a good pitch on that one. Way to take advantage of it. Uh, you know, we got a bunch of uh, sales and marketing people on the webinar today, so uh, we can all appreciate a good good sales pitch there, and that was great. Um, I think, Matt, we're talking one thing, about Matt, I want to say one thing. I want to make sure people realize they can take baby steps. They don't have to jump in full guns here. They can just they can just test it. It's so easy, and it costs nothing, just their time. And, and I want yeah, to just add that too, if that's okay. Um, I think you know, Linda, what you had mentioned is you know that people can blog on your, for example, on the broker list. And when you, if you do have your own blog or your own website, you blog, let's say on the broker list, or you do a guest blog for Allen Buchanan, you can also blog for Digzy as well on any topic. Um, that's going to help you quite a bit and climb up the uh, the ranks, uh, especially on the organic search results on Google, which is something like Joshua was mentioning earlier. Um, doing guest posts, like Lynn had mentioned that she, you know, she uh, she blogs across different sites. Um, that's a good way to start. Is leverage other people's platforms who've already uh, gained the traffic. Uh, let's say, for example, the broker list or Alan's blog or my blog over at Digzy. But you should, if you want to test, you don't want to set it up. You can actually just write a guest post on a relevant topic. Whether it's um, you know, Linda wrote an, an amazing piece on uh, cam charges for us, so she's leveraging not only her platform, my platform, and that's making her a thought leader. Uh, I'm not sure if you've gotten anything from that, Linda, but um, you should definitely uh, try to leverage other people's audience. Uh, I know, Alan, you write for the Orange County uh, Register, right? Yes, he does. Yeah, so that's awesome, right there. So you're leveraging. Uh, platforms with a large audience already, and you can take baby steps, but you can take baby steps that rocket launch you into True. the air. True. Like yeah, and just like Andrew and everybody on here was saying with baby steps, just so you all know, the CRE Breakfast Club started, uh, what, two years ago now? Uh, time flies. Uh, about two years ago, it started with a few of us here just getting on onto a call, uh, getting things started. We weren't sure what we are going to talk about, where we are going to go with things, but we just did it. Uh, and now we have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people coming on uh, to these. We have now we have 20 special guests that come on to these sessions. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun for us. And it, it works as a really good brain uh, session for us. Uh, so we can go in and make it like a brain trust. And uh, we got some really smart people on here, smarter than I am. Um, so, and now, and I'm not sure why you can't hear us. Uh, it's, it, can everybody hear us? Yes. I can. Yeah, I can hear. Yeah. Okay, um, let me see here. Another thing I want to mention is all of us that are on these calls, we all get closer as people, and, and we form bonds. It's like I feel like I know Lynn. I mean, she probably laughs at me because I feel like I know her so well. We've never met. I mean, and Andrew, I'm getting to know, right? Andrew, I'm starting to get to know you now. Right. And, you know, I, I knew Josh, I knew Christina and Alan, but it's like it's so nice to have these people that you meet and you and like Andrew said, he's willing to let people blog on his platform. That's huge. I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. So I want to I want to take take some of the time off the blogging. Like I said, you know, start baby steps. Go where you need to go with things. Uh, just like we did with the Siri Breakfast Club. Get into blogging. Uh, write what you're passionate about or think out loud. Like Alan says, you have plenty of sources to utilize with with Linda and Andrew or anybody else that allows you to do guest blogs. So make sure you get out there and do some guest blogs. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything too elaborate. Um, you know, I know uh, Steve Wayne's on the call. I saw a couple of his blogs. He was talking about, uh, you know, at one point I think uh, race cars and stuff and his experience in race cars. Talk yeah. about what you know best, um, or or maybe something that's in your life that can be applied, and you just want to share it with other people. Right. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's about you know drawing an audience to there and talking about what you want, or or again, like Alan says, talking out loud. So we hey, also Matt, wanted to talk you about social media. Really Go ahead. So yeah. I'm Yes, and one of the things that we do at Digzy is we, you know, we're really heavy into marketing because uh, we connect tenants looking for space with uh, tenant rep brokers and markets that we pre-vet, right? So it's really important for us to attract the audience that most of us are trying to attract anyway. Um, one of the things we do is we do what standard, um, you know, search engine optimization people will do, which is, you know, research keywords. Um, but a neat trick that I found, and I'm happy to share this with you, was um, when you type into Google, like let's say something that you know most people are searching for, for example, LoopNet, right? You start typing in LoopNet, what Google will do is autocomplete 
what most people search for and I literally did this probably like two three months ago and as soon as you type in LoopNet it goes alternatives so we wrote a blog post called nine free LoopNet alternatives and that ranks number one in Google right now and literally we've done nothing and uh, we get so much traffic out of that so I would suggest that you you know it's pretty easy to go to like the keyword planner when you're planning to blog about something and let's say you have a list of topics of things that you're passionate about, but you can actually prioritize those topics by going into Google and see what most people search for, or even just start typing it into Google and see what auto-completes, and that should help you prioritize your time effectively so that when you write a blog post or you write about something, it's something that you know people are thirsty for. That's great. Yeah. Great point. Great, great. Um, so, you know, like I said, we've been talking about the the, social, the the blogging part, but I also want to bring in some social media aspects on here and stuff. Uh, we were going to have our special guest, uh, Maxwell Finn. He's incredible with social media. I think we've all met him on here before. Uh, unfortunately, he's stuck in an airport uh, due to some weather uh, constraints, so it doesn't look like he's going to be able to join us today. So uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to touch base on some other people here uh, that have some social media expert uh, expertise and, and uh, you know what they've been doing and, and I'd like to hear Christi Christina we haven't heard too much from you here uh, I'd like to bring you into the whole social media stuff and and, and, and you know um, excuse me if I'm picking on you on, on here but you're in camera so I'm seeing you and uh, what do you do for social media what have you found works but more importantly what have you found that doesn't work and why doesn't it work Ah, oh, you are picking on me, going off my question list. Um, <laughs> I think one of my biggest things is I, I utilize Twitter a lot and also LinkedIn. And I don't personally write a lot. I'm more of a visual person, so I um, have a photographic background. Uh, so I try to use a lot of visual um, images, imagery, and things like that to bring the commercial estate um, alive for my clients. And... Um, so Twitter really, especially with some of the upgrades they've done, making it more visual has really helped with that. Uh, when I was at GPE, they didn't even have a Twitter account, and now they have over 2,000 followers just in a couple of years, really. And primarily, that's all commercial real estate. We kept it very niche-oriented, and I think that really helped to, to stay on topic, but not be boring either. I mean, we have a lot of fun with it and just throw in some fun stuff that we find on there and try to make it a little more personal, but also, um, you know, get people out there. And, and we've made some great friends like all of you. And, and Lynn, what about you? Well, I hate to admit this. We're on Twitter and I don't keep up with it. It's automatic and it's probably not a good way to do it. Um, we're also on Facebook. We're on LinkedIn. Uh, but LinkedIn is really where I get the majority of my comments. And I apologize if anybody's tweeted back to me because I'm not watching it. Um, I, I, I think, too, you know, as uh, real estate people, finding people to work for you. I had one lady for me for two years and one for three years. And not everybody, I'm finding that, the, and the reason I went to outsourcing is not, my assistants can't always do this stuff. So I've kind of let it go by the wayside because I don't. I my my assistant is gone at the moment. I just lost her, so I got to get somebody new, and I want to get somebody that can actually follow that. But I made the decision to just concentrate on LinkedIn. Okay, so so find something that works, uh, you know, for you, and kind of just stick with it until you can, uh, you know, add more to it by bringing in more help or freeing up more time, and then and then you can add more layers to it, and that's great too. I mean, you don't want to spread yourself too thin. Uh, you know, I see. You know, I met Andrew from uh, uh, from LinkedIn. Uh, you know, I saw a beautiful picture he had on there of uh, he had a computer on there with a mouse pad and all kinds of cool stuff, and it just looked beautiful. And that's where one of the times that I remember from him. So maybe he can kind of Andrew. Why don't you tell us about some of your experiences with social media? Sure. Um, uh, first and foremost, I we I use Twitter a lot. Um, I use LinkedIn a lot, and um, I use Facebook not so much for business purposes, um, but uh, what I have found out is that LinkedIn does work uh, for referrals for the same reasons that uh, Lynn had mentioned. Uh, for our business, it doesn't uh, necessarily um, draw in business. We've gotten some clients from Twitter, um, but what I mainly do on Twitter is mostly interact with other commercial real estate professionals and, um, and other startup founders. So. The one thing that I do is you can get a lot of time, you can get sucked in into a lot of this, so I try to streamline my life as much as possible. 
So I use a tool which most of you probably use called Buffer. Uh, but I take it a step beyond that. I try to share a lot of content that I personally find interesting. And there's a handful of websites that I um, that I consistently read. So what I do is I actually use a tool called Sniply. So it's Snip, like S-N-I-P as in Paul, dot L-Y. And what I do is you can actually set feeds in there. And you take the RSS feed, which is basically an electronic feed of all of the latest posts, into Snipply and I ta and I basically add uh, a call to action which means a little banner that promotes our company. So whenever I'm sharing content, which is a lot of the time, uh, people get to read interesting content but there's also a banner promoting Dixie in case they need you know that. Some people find it annoying. For me it's like hey if I'm gonna make the time at least I want to have mind share for our company doing that. Uh, so it lets me every morning I can share in between you know uh, 10 to 12 articles I've read that uh, I, that automatically gets to promote my business. So I use that to automate a lot of the things, and it can share not only on Twitter, but it shares on fa it can share on Facebook, LinkedIn. I mainly share on LinkedIn and Facebook. I think that's where most of our audience. Um, I'm sorry, LinkedIn and Twitter. That's where I I think most of the most of the audience that's uh, relevant to those types of topics like business, startups, funding. Uh, you know, growing sales, commercial real estate, and things like that. Um, but then, once in a while, you know, I'll walk around the office, and we have a we got some pretty nice digs out here in um, in downtown Orange, uh, where you know I'll take a picture with the team, et cetera, and I'll share it on social media. But I think, at least my experience has been that LinkedIn is probably one of the best bets, in addition to Twitter, which is basically free shouting of sharing interesting content that you can uh, that you can brand on your own. Great, great, great. And one of the things I want to tell you, you know, we, we, we've had um, a LinkedIn trainer come on here and talk about it. We'll probably have him come on again. Uh, for, for anybody that didn't see it, we do have a recorded. Uh, I think Alan and Linda were all, was on that. One of the things that you, 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 we might want to touch bases too is when we make up a, a Twitter profile or we make up a LinkedIn profile or a Facebook profile, how should we do it? Um, you know, Alan, I'm not sure if it comes with age or not, why you can't hear us, but everybody else is good on this. So we got to get you some new headset. There you go. Um, yeah, turn, turn, the, turn the, turn the, <laughs> I was hoping for a new face, but, um, you know, beggars can't be choosers, but maybe Matt, we can, can touch I, base on, on profiles. I make, and I want to go ahead. Can I make a point on something Lynn said? I was kind of waiting uh, for a, a lull. Lynn had said that she has a Twitter account. She's not, actively engaging with people but she has a Twitter account and and my point is I know that you know all the experts say you know if you're gonna have social media you need to use it well to me I think just having the account is is still something that's better than nothing because if you search for someone on Twitter and you're somebody like you know somebody that uses Twitter or you're maybe a potential customer at least they can find her even if she's not engaging that's my only point Okay. And, and you know, and 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 I, I think that you know I can go both ways. The way I look at it is, I look at somebody that goes on there, and if I look for somebody, and they're on social media or some other place, and that's the place that I find them, and that's the only place that I'm finding them, and that kind of sounds like what you'd be talking on. And they haven't tweeted for six months, a year, or something like that. I assume they're no longer in business. Well, no, uh, she's using automation. I, all I'm saying I is she's automated. she's automating, yeah. but but she's Perfect. there. Like, so. My point is she's not engaging like a lot of us are physically engaging, but she's still using it. That's all I was saying. That brings up something great. Hey, hey so if Matt. You, if um, you have – go ahead. Yeah, Steve, go ahead, man. Matt, Matt it's, it's, it's uh, Steve Wayne here. Hi, yeah, Steve. you know, you just brought up a really good point. Hey, how's it going? Good. Hey, everybody. Um, I, I think you brought up a really good point, and that is that um, I think if you, if you blog or you use social media, you know, with, with the intent of – lead gen or trying to get business, it's pretty obvious and it comes off that way, right? But in the beginning, if you just like have an authentic conversation that you're having with people that you're genuinely interested in, then it, it creates, um, it creates some uh, activity there. And if you don't have that activity, I, I look at companies when I'm making a decision about hiring somebody, if I don't see recent social media activity, it may not be the thing that like pushes me over the goal line to, to hire that uh, person, 
But if I don't see anything, right, I, I like you, I, I just assume that maybe they're just not doing anything anymore or, or they're, not, they're not in business. Um, and a lot of times that's not the case. It's just that they don't really know how to leverage social media. So I think it can be, you know, in the earlier stages, it can be a, just a, a way to demonstrate that, hey, I'm here, I'm in business, I'm working hard, and I'm, and I'm, uh, I'm active. Uh, so that, that's been an observation of mine. No, Stephen, that's great. And, and one of the things that I want to I want to go back on, and maybe I missed it, but Lynn automates it. So look, uh, my point to you would be if you're if you're going to do it and you're going to go dormant for a little while, uh, figure out an automation tool to right. at least show right. some kind of activity, yeah. um, sure. something going in there, or take it down. Um, right. But but yeah, no, but don't leave it with no activity. So Lynn's doing the great thing. Right. Like she's too busy. It's automated, and then she'll bring it back on and keep it going. So. Yeah, these are great topics. I love hearing about all this stuff. What other tools are you using, or what are you finding out that's working, Steve? Um, you know, I think I would echo a lot of the same things we've heard here. I I, I don't use Facebook a ton for um, for business like like Andrew, but I love LinkedIn, and I like to. Um, well, one of the things we've had success with recently is, you know, you're always trying to come up with new content, right, and, and interesting stuff, and we don't want it to just be, you know empty noise and, and, and social media for the sake of social media. So one thing we've done lately is we've been um, doing some press releases through Globe Street, and Linda helped us with that. Um, and, uh, you know, we took that content and then, you know, reposted and reblogged it in a bunch of other channels. So I've actually found, um, you know, when you have content on other websites, like I recently did a guest post on Duke Long's blog, it's just nice to be able to have, you know, other websites with your content on them that you can share, right? Right. Um, so it's, for, for me, I think that's worked really well, and Linda does a great job of that because, you know, she'll take, like, I, Linda, I think you re, you reposted our Globe Street. Um, yes, yes, we did. Uh, yeah, and, and so, you know, stuff like that has, has worked pretty well for us. I think another thing that's that's pretty powerful and, and one of my favorite social media medias, if you will, is uh, is YouTube. And to give you an example of how I use YouTube recently, I, I was asked to make a presentation to a group of tax deferred exchange specialists on using social media. And one of the one of the items that I talked about was Steve's whole predictive analytics, and he did a wonderful seven minute YouTube video about predictive analytics and I thought and, and Steve you may get some business as a result of this I hope you do but I, I highly touted the service and I said look you're a tax deferred exchange specialist you need to find someone that's either in the process of selling or has sold a property and is an S that's that's the person that you're looking for so how about doing some predictive analytics with potential sellers now this is uh, IPX 1031 exchange are all over the nation and what better way than to start mailing to those folks that are potential mm -hmm. sellers so that was a, a real easy way for me to take Steve's YouTube video plug it into my presentation I actually played the video it's in its entirety and people were blown away that you know someone had thought about predictive analytics and, and how potential sellers could be identified um, I also use Linda Day Harris's broker list. I use Matt Smith as you know someone that is talking to more brokers than anyone I possibly know. You all were all built into my presentation as well from the subject of collaboration. Well, thanks, so, Alan. Yeah, you're welcome, and I, and I hope that yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Alan. I hope you'll all get some business from it. But I guess that I guess the net of it is you know, collaboration is key, and social media can help you collaborate by identifying folks either in your trade or in a complementary trade that you can collaborate with. Uh, Linda and I have done a ton of stuff. What we're doing today is collaboration. But if you think if you think a little bit outside of I only want to talk to commercial real estate brokers, you know, think in terms of who else is talking to commercial real estate brokers. How can I identify with that group? How can I collaborate with that group in such a manner that I'm now visible to commercial real estate brokers? Matt, I wanted to mention yeah, a couple. Oh, go ahead, Josh. Go yeah, ahead. I just want. Yeah, I just wanted to, along with that, just point out that the success South, uh, SBN South and Commercial has had a lot of uh, success in terms of growth, uh, publicity, 
And a lot of it really did come through Twitter and social media, just like I was talking about. We met uh, GPE through that, and then since then, GPE has promoted a lot of our stuff through their daily news blast. And then uh, the broker list, we found that through Twitter, and the broker list has been hugely uh, beneficial for South and commercial. So just networking through, like you're talking about, networking through social media accounts, platforms, can really connect you with the right people, especially if you're really engaging and communicating. Now, just being on social media and having an account won't necessarily generate as many uh, connections and network for you. However, the more you put into social media, the more you're going to get out of it. And then also, I somewhat related, somewhat unrelated, I have been doing some comparisons between how effective is Facebook versus Twitter and I can tell you that the impressions from Twitter use is well over 3,000 times better, 3,000 more impressions, 4,000 more page views or profile views, uh, more than 5,000 percent more growth from month to month between the two accounts with Twitter having a lot more uh, effectiveness than Facebook. So I, I thought that was something that I should put out there for you. And, and Matt, you had mentioned tools, and Andrew had mentioned uh, uh, Sniffly, which we also use. But the but the tools that I would be lost without, and I started with one and I've kind of gravitated to another, is Zapier and, and Ift. And Zapier and Ift are powerhouse tools. Andrew, have you used, used them? Yes, I use Zapier. Oh, could you see being without it? I mean, it is yeah. phenomenal. And basically, it does un almost unlimited automation for you that you could even think of without programmers. And what we do, um, in some things we do, a lot of it's built into our site, but some <laughs> things that I use Zapier for, we have a tremendous amount of RSS feeds for our site and our customers. And our customers can take RSS feeds. If, for example, I'll, I'll just give an example. Um, it could be our blog. It could be uh, their, their, their have listings. It could be their wants. It could be anything we give them a feed for. And with RSS feeds, you have so much power because you can fill your stream or your channels with content automatically and have almost unlimited. Same with Buffer because Andrew had mentioned Buffer. And with RSS feeds, the sky is the limit what you can do. And I see that extremely underutilized in our industry. So I recommend Zapier and IFT. IFT is I-F-T-T-T, -T -T, which stands for if this, then that. And what it does is it does things for you based on certain things that trigger. I hope I explained that OK. I know it's kind of. Yeah, you know, I'll give an example, Linda. So this is kind of off the the um, the, the topic of what it can generate. So I use a tool called. Um, I pay nine bucks a month. There's a tool called Full Contact. They have a mobile app where I can just scan a business card, and they'll they're hum it'll upload, and humans actually transcribe the um, the contact information into a card that pushes back into my phone. It'll sync it to my contacts automatically over the air. But then I can tell with Zapier, which is similar to if this then that, I can tell it, hey, add this to my mailing list, add this to my CRM. Uh, right. Send them the following email, and it happens all instantaneously. So I can actually meet Alan, take a picture. It'll send him a thank you email for meeting me. It'll add him to a mailing list and do, uh, do a bunch of stuff, which, right. you know, it saves a lot of time, especially if every time you post a blog post, you send it out to people, you know, in your network trying to share right. it and automate right. all that. Right. And not only that, but with Zapier, if you take an RSS feed, for example, if you, if you were a blogger on the broker list and you took your RSS feed, every time your blog post, you could automate 10 things with it. You could say, okay, send it to Twitter, send it to Facebook, do this, do that, send an email here, put something on a Google Doc. I mean, you can track everything, and it works great with Google Docs. So I think everybody, what you guys are all saying is probably awesome. Um, but from Lynn's face, um, her, her uh, look on her face there, <laughs> pick on her face, uh, maybe it's over the head of some of us. And, and, and Lynn, you probably know way more about this because you already automated. Just She had that look of confusion there. Um, well, so, um, so I'm you just, you know, them down because we've been using Hootsuite. And um, what, since I've outsourced it, um, we've learned that it's not probably – didn't, I didn't know. It, I, I always had my assistants do this, frankly. 
Um, and since people come and go, I decided to outsource it. And we're finding that Hootsuite isn't working very well. And I've decided that I'm not a specialist in all this stuff. And I'm going to work on what I do. And then um, we might be mm -hmm. changing. But I'm not making those decisions because that you guys are way, way beyond me in that. Well, you know, I'm not trying to say any of this is complex. It sounds like it is. Andrew backed me up here, but it's not. Do you it's agree? Not. It's really easy, actually. It, it's, it, it is. It's just knowing the tools. In other words, understanding that there is the power, especially with lead generation. And I, I wish Maxwell was on the call because one of his big points, and I'm throwing, throwing this in for you, Maxwell, is his big point is when somebody touches you in social media or hits you, you need to be able to capture them, you know, in some way, and and it could be a, grabbing an email address or a Twitter account or whatever, and using that for future. Um, what did he? I can't remember what he called it, but the, the, um, repurposing. In other words, okay, using that to follow up with them or send them an email or do something with it. So I think that's what generation. Um, you know, we're talking about today what automation can do with lead generation, and these are tools you can use. What, what, what I would like, what I would like everybody to kind of take away from this today um, is is write something down. One thing that you can get started with. Uh, sometimes I get analysis paralysis, and in doing so, uh, I start to kind of write things down and segment stuff. So maybe you can take, a, as you write these things down, as, as Lynn's writing them down, segment them, uh, compartmentalize them, uh, and start out with one thing. Uh, get, get a small win, and then you can work up to the ways of the big win and the automations and the if this and that, if that. Um, right. You know, so, so don't think you got to do it all today. Uh, uh, you know, segment it out. Start something first. And then, you know, I'd like, I'd like you all to share it. Share it with us if you could. Share it on Twitter. Find us on Facebook or something. Uh, maybe that's a challenge. Maybe we'll have to have a scavenger hunt someday. Uh, if you can find Steve Wayne, uh, you know, <laughs> driving, a, drive, driving through the racetracks on LinkedIn, uh, we'll give you a free uh, subscription to uh, right. our Real Next product or right. something. We'll have to do something fun like that sometime. Um, give him a, um, <clears throat> a, a beauty tip from Alan Buchanan here. Right. Well, I also offer I, I mean, <laughs> that one. Yeah. Matt, I also will offer to anybody who reaches out to me to give you my notes from this this um this call. I have I have notes, so I'll share notes with people. I have it in a, a Google Doc, so I'm willing to share those. I want to say too that um, the the people that I've hired the the last two sets of uh, assistants I had did not understand social media at all. And frankly, Linda was a godsend because I would just say, can you just call Linda? I, I sent these people all to school. I did. I spent a lot of money on teaching them. That didn't work, but if they called Linda, they knew how to do it. So that's <laughs> Thank amazing. you, Linda. Yeah, and, I, and I, you know I constantly looked out for you. And every time you had a new assistant, I'm like, send them, tell me, I'll talk to them. I loved helping that's them. That's why I've outsourced it. I'm not going to. Well, you know, everybody that's on this call, find us on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile, make one up. Uh, one of the tips for LinkedIn profiles I'd recommend, too, is, 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 is it's not a resume, or at least in my opinion, it's not. Um, it's really about your clients and, and your showcasing yourself to them uh, and the things that you offer. So if you don't have one, build one up. There's some great tips and blogs on how to, how to build a great LinkedIn profile. And then connect with each one of us. Uh, each and every one of us on there, and, and let us know what, what's working for you and what's not working for you. And maybe you can be a next uh, guest uh, uh, on one of our topics here. We're going to be having a, a couple more. Now, now I'm not going to be getting off of this right now, but I did want to let everybody know we are going to be having uh, more of these coming up. The first Tuesday of April and the first Tuesday of May, uh, we're going to be having other topics. We're going to be talking about lead generation, uh, and we're going to be talking about networks and organizations like CCIM and SAOR and CPM and um, uh, you know, all kinds of different things. And we're also going to be talking about using technology and automation to generate leads. And I think that's where Linda and Andrew's uh, topics are going to help out. So, you know, as, as we start blogging and we start writing some articles, let us know where you're doing and how you're doing with things, uh, what you're doing. And then we'll tie some of those um, success stories and, 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 and failures. And failures could be the next success. So don't, don't think because you failed it's not a good thing. Um, and we'll tie those into maybe some of the automation. And then we'll also tie those into uh, some of the networks. Because I've used blogging and social media uh, to get my word out. I've used these tools uh, that we're going to be talking about with Andrew and myself and Steve Wayne uh, in the next session. And then I've 
gone to these sessions of uh, SAOR and CCIM, and I've had people come up to me and say, hey, Matt, nice to meet you. You know, hey, Matt, come over here. Hey, Matt, this. I've never met him before in my entire life, and it's the greatest <laughs> feeling in the world. You. you feel like a superstar and a rock star and everybody else, and it, it kind of fed up to those. So that's why we did some of the session we did. Social media, a little automation, a little, uh, you know, going to these meetings, and it makes them so powerful. Uh, I got an email from one of the most amazing brokers in the world this morning uh, requesting for uh, a broker out in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. So if anybody knows an amazing industrial broker, um, please contact uh, contact one of us here. Well, I want to mention uh, something you know, on that point, Matt, because it, it I, I just have to. It's one of my biggest pet peeves, and, and so many people just don't pay heed to this, but and it was, it's in my notes, is that you've got to tell people what you do in your online profiles. And I'm probably the biggest mouth begging people every month I send out an email, update your profiles. They don't believe me. I get calls every single day. Alan is a, is a, is a right here on the phone. He can tell me, he, Alan, when you look for a broker, don't you call me and say, Linda, I need a guy in this town or a girl in that town or whatever? Absolutely. Okay, mm -hmm. Mark Chase. I mean, I get all these brokers calling me, Linda, I need somebody here. Linda, I need somebody there. I go through the broker list and I read and I see these blanks and I want to cry. And I have that in my notes. I want to cry. I go, here all these people are adding their profiles, but they're not telling me what they do. Or even they are pictures. losing leads. I know. And no pictures, no. That's a no no. In LinkedIn. Yeah, you gotta have good photos too. I mean, just <laughs> taking one with your camera does not suffice. Uh, get out there oh. and spend a couple of bucks on a professional photographer. It goes a long way. <laughs> what about taking videos in the front seat of your car, does that work? Yeah, you have yeah. <laughs> it does so well too. Oh my god. I'd like to try that, but I don't know. I'm a little. I think I'd crash. Did you that by yourself, or did you have somebody help you to start? The very first one of those I did, I was actually driving, and my friend Linda Day Harrison, uh, you, you could hear her screeching on the brakes from Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> oh my God, don't drive and take at the same time. So now I'm just parked in front of my house. A couple it's of them are on location. A couple of them are on location, but most of them are just sitting right in front of my house. I was I worried about that tweet, by the way. What's that? I remember reading that tweet. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> but this just shows you the incredible power of networking, and I'm going to let Lynn go right now before she gets mad at me. I can see her reaction oh, no, and her facial okay. expressions that's on okay. here. <laughs> um, yeah, you can read my face. Um, I wanted to say something about the LinkedIn. Another thing when I outsourced my uh, LinkedIn account is they actually went through and cleaned it up and added stuff, and they added case studies. I would never have thought of that. My brochure is on there now. Um, and I do, I also would like to say this, please don't copy other people's LinkedIn sites. I don't know who's doing it. Somebody in social media has been copying one of our ITRA members' website, um, their LinkedIn onto others. And that, that's just not really cool. I know I spend a lot of money for everything. I write everything, but I use writers. I use professional writers. I would not want people copying my, my LinkedIn profile. Lynn, they now, what does that you. mean? Uh, Lynn, what does that mean? Like, I, I've never heard of that before. Yeah, it's happening. <laughs> and now we, I don't, somebody is um, in the social media business. He's doing LinkedIn. He or she's, we, I don't know who it is yet, doing LinkedIn profiles, and they're copying the ones from, I'm part of ITRA, International Tenant Representative Alliance, and they're copying some of our member stuff word for word. Hmm. So. Well, it happens all over the internet, Matt. People are copying tons of stuff. They copy pictures of buildings and post them as other listings that aren't even true. <laughs> well, stay That's away from truth. Lynn's profile if you're going to copy something. If you want to copy a profile, <laughs> copy mine. You're welcome to copy my LinkedIn profile. Stay away from Lynn's, though. Lynn has to, Lynn's got to stay with her network and everything. You can copy my profile uh, if you want a profile for LinkedIn or anything else. Um, not saying it's going to work good for you, but you can yeah. copy it. Lynn, I, mean, I want to mention. Idea, though. Lynn, I want to mention that I really want your whoever your people are. You tell them to send me the content so your profile is good on the broker list too. Oh, okay. Send me whatever you've got. You know what I mean, and I'll put it up there for you. Yeah. So we're going to go into some questions and answers. 
Okay. And I wanted to go into some questions. First, first one, uh, George was so kind to ask, uh, would someone be able to put a list of some of these automation tools uh, like Zapier and if, if this, mm -hmm. then that, and, and all these other um, mm -hmm. things that I can't say properly uh, on maybe a blog yeah. and kind of, okay, so you're going to, so Linda's going to share her notes on thebrokerlist.com, thebrokerlist.com. Uh, you can go there and check it out. She's going to have her notes on there. So George, you can take a look at them. Uh, I have some questions here uh, with other people, and, and please start ringing in your questions uh, because that's why everybody's on this panel here today uh, is to answer questions as well as inform you on what's worked, what hasn't worked, and, and just network with us. Let's let's all get together. Uh, one of the questions I had that, that I haven't heard in a social media panel before is do you use Pinterest? And if so, what way do you use it in? I do. I use it. I do. Okay, so the heads are going all over the place. No. I use it. I use it because we have so much content and basically Pinterest is a search engine and so the concept is that you're you're linking an image so let's say Lynn has her blog and she has great images now or Christina as she knows how important images are and she has pages somewhere that has content on it I'm linking images to our content so if someone's searching in Pinterest which we get a lot of our stuff pinned they could be pictures of our brokers, they could be pictures of our, our company logos of our members, it could be pictures of buildings, anything that's an image. Every time we do a blog, we post it on Pinterest and you know it, it brings us traffic. It's just about traffic for us. Alan, you're shaking your head yes. Are you are you getting recipes off there or are you uh, generating no. leads? <laughs> Actually, I, I, I like looking at pictures of southern mansions. Yeah. Just okay. Get me back to my childhood. No, I use it in a lot of the ways that Linda mentioned. Every time I, I do a Tuesday traffic tip or every time I, I do a blog post, um, I add it to Pinterest. And it, and it takes the image that I use for the blog and then it actually relates the content to that. Um, I also have uh, logos of all my clients in there. I have uh, buildings, deals that I do. Uh, I, I put images of those in there. And then I have some personal stuff. Believe it or not, I do have some pictures of southern mansions. I have pictures of golf courses that I've played and golf courses that I'd like to play. I, I redid, we redid our yard recently, and I've got images of um, southwest landscaping with, with, that you find everywhere in Phoenix, but you don't find in southern California very much. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't say that I go to Pinterest and spend a lot of time there, but I definitely post to Pinterest. Me too. I don't spend a lot of time there, but I do post to Pinterest because it's just another source of traffic. And I look at social media as you need to be user-friendly for your customer. So if some of my customers use Pinterest, I'm there for them. I tell you, though, uh, you, you, look at, you look at folks that are our daughter's age, our daughter's 28, she goes to Pinterest for virtually anything, you know, re like, like you mentioned, Matt, recipes, party ideas, um, baby clothes, you name it, and they go to Pinterest and look for that kind of stuff. So it's, people are searching there. I, I want to have a question because I know there was a problem with pictures for a while. I have been purchasing, I found a new uh, website, I think it's called Carva, Carnava, I can get it to you. Canva. Canva. Canva, we all I, use I it, it's it. amazing. Love it. Yeah, it's a great website and so that's where I've been getting some of my pictures um, and is it okay to put those on Pinterest since I paid for those well yeah, yeah. I mean sure you, because a, a, can, Canva you're actually creating things too it's not just copying you know the way I use it and you're probably using it is you're manipulating it or are you mm -hmm. just using well, a picture if you want a case study, if everybody can see defining lead generation for today's CRE uh, professionals, uh, you can see that. Can everybody see that on the screen? Yeah, that's Canva. Okay, that was made in Canva. Oh, was it? Yeah, it looks yeah, great. Yeah, it's, it's great for infographics. Yeah. That's a good product. I think I did one for you, Steve, for one of your blogs. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, that was a awesome. Canva image. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I love it, and, so I, and you, I love, there's you, another, go ahead. If you had to set out a goal for each and everybody as a takeaway from this, and you wanted to say, you know, one action item that you can take away from this and do something now to, to start the lead generation, and don't think that just because you make a blog, you're going to get, you know, you're going to sell a $100 million building, uh, or you're going to lease three 300,000 square feet. It's not going to happen, but, but 
if they, if they can just do one thing just to get started, if they're not getting started, if they did get started and they stopped, what's one thing that you that you think they should do? Uh, open up one social media account and put out a tweet and say hi to everybody. Um, to get their LinkedIn, to to write a little blog and, and get it guest posted on Linda's site or Andrew's site or. What's something that each one of you think what might be something good for them to take away? I want people to take away from this session and be able to have a quick action item they can do now without any research or anything. I'm going to jump in on that one, Matt, just really quick. Um, because we all have limit, especially in the commercial real estate industry, we all have very limited time. Most of us don't make a dime until we, uh, we you know, put together a lease or we sell a building. It's very tough to make the time that you – uh, need to put into social media and a lot of things. You should definitely have social media accounts and try to automate that. But the number one thing is you, if you're going to do anything, you really want to multiply your efforts out of the gate. And knowing what I now know, I would definitely create my own blog, easy on WordPress. And I would basically use that blog uh, to put a couple pieces out, uh, maybe on mine, but I would leverage other people's platforms that have a, a large audience, like the Broker List or Digzy or other, um, you know, other websites. If you can blog for LoopNet, blog for LoopNet. Uh, anybody who is your audience, because they're going to link back to you too. So it's not only going to get a larger audience of your prospective customer, but at the same time, it's going to make your new blog relevant. So I would probably go after the force multiplier where if I put a dollar in, it multiplies to, you know, I'm buying a lot more eyeballs for just a dollar than if I paid Google $500 to have people come to my site. And it's free when you blog. So I would definitely go after the force multiplier. Go after uh, sites that have a large, large audience and put pieces out there all the time because that's not only going to link back to your website, blog on your own blog, but just leverage large audiences from other people's platforms. That would be my my two cents. So from what I'm taking away from everybody, I know this is social media and blogging, but blogging seems to be the easiest thing that people can do to write a topic that they're passionate about. It doesn't have to be lengthy and, and post it someplace. Post it someplace that yeah. has there's traffic well, well, uh, I, to Linda's site, to Alan. Think, and Al, Alan I, wants to say something. I can see him. I do he, too, he, man. He's barking here. I don't know that I would agree with that. I, I would say that, look, you fall into one of three categories. You're either a consumer of content, you're a curator of content, or you're, you're a creator of content. And if you think about consuming content, if someone's on a webinar today and watching, they're consuming content. If someone read a newspaper this morning, they consume content. If you watch the debates on a YouTube video, you consume content. All right, so if you're already a consumer, what I would suggest is become a curator. And all that means is you're taking a, a YouTube video of the debate and you're simply forwarding that via one of your social media platforms. If you watch this webinar, you're forwarding that to a friend that you think might benefit. So if you're currently curating, I'd suggest then take your step in and, and maybe think about creating some content, being in, a, being in a blog post, being in a YouTube video, what have you. But I wouldn't just immediately jump in and start writing stuff because, A, you're not going to be able to sustain it. And one of the worst things that you can possibly do in, social, in a social media effort is be inconsistent because people start to realize that, hey, this guy used to post on Tuesdays, now he doesn't, or this guy used to be around and now he's not. You know, what, what's going on? So uh, become... If you're a consumer, become a curator. If you're a curator, become a creator, and just move yourself up that continuum. Yeah. I agree with Alan. I think starting out, and not to go against your thinking, Andrew, unless you're so committed, a blog is a major commitment and obligation. Um, I think, you know, to me, it, it goes back to what you said, Andrew. They can blog on our sites. I mean, they could just start. That's why I say baby steps, and I go back to baby steps, which kind of ties in with Alan, just to test the waters. Sharing other people's content gets you noticed. I'm telling you that. One of the number one things I see out there, and you guys will believe me on this, is there's always people blogging about you know, the top 10 bloggers or the top 10 websites or the top 10 this or that because the people that they're, they're blogging about notice them. Alan, do you agree? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, it's kind of like, you know, it's that simple. They're, people are sharing our content. So if you, let's say you're going after a certain industry 
start sharing that industry's content. Let's say in right. Lynn's case, she wants to go after CFOs. What CFOs do you want to target? Start sharing their content. That's what I would be doing. I would be a, an advocate for that company. You know, if, if you like, you know, you're trying to do business with, you know, some company in your market, start sharing their blogs, reading, commenting on their blogs. That That's a no-brainer, commenting on blogs. And that falls into that well, category. There's definitely some falls into that category of curation. I mean, if you look at, Coy Davidson was one of the original bloggers in our industry. He's done a phenomenal job. Uh, the guy absolutely killed it last year and the year before. He will tell you that roughly 100% of his new business comes from folks, uh, from his blog, from folks searching mm -hmm. out and finding his blog, either via other Collier's agents, other real estate brokers that refer business to him, or just occupants that, that are searching. But if you look at, at, Coy, at some of Coy's posts, they're not original content. They're taking, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll repost Facebook, he'll repost uh, interesting articles, weekend reading, that kind of thing. That's just simply a curation. That's not, that's not content creation. So there's nothing that say, look at the news funnel. Uh, you know, look at, look at Connect CRE. All of those sites are just simply curating others' content. You know, become, mm -hmm. a, become an online newspaper cura curation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think one that thing I want... would add to that um, is that for those that are curators now and looking to create their own content, one of the things that I've noticed is like a lot of people struggle with what to write about or what to say if they do want to do something original. And what I've noticed is that um, if you have stream of consciousness, if you just think about what what you think about on a daily basis it's shocking how much interesting content there is just in your own brain. I mean, if you're a real estate broker, you yeah. could tell a deal story, right? I mean, you could tell a story right. about – actually, one story that I, that I remember having in a, um, a commercial real estate deal is I was in the middle of an escrow, and I found out there was a murder on the property like 20 years ago. And, uh, and I was like, oh, my God. And the, I was like, this is going to blow up my whole deal. They're not going to want to buy it. And uh, – and that like little anecdote, I've told that story um, in in speeches, and I've written about it. And you know, just a little deep. That's like one of many deal stories. So real estate brokers, if you are a real estate broker, you've got so much interesting content packed into your brain. It's just about being you know being transparent and 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 uh, and articulating it exactly as. You think about it, and you know. I think um, Alan does a great job of this, and so does Duke Long. Um, you know, both you guys have like this really like good stream of consciousness, and people find it really interesting. And so everybody, I think everybody has that innate in them to be able to communicate that way. I think that it's really important if you're trying to. If you're trying to generate traffic for your website or, or you're just trying to get known, even in your area, if you're a broker in whatever city you are, chances are there's not a whole lot of other people in that same market writing content. There may be some, but there's probably not a lot. Once you decide to start writing uh, whatever, tips on finding office space in Chicago or tips on finding office space in wherever, or just general information, take out what it is that you care about, what you're passionate about, what you're knowledgeable about, and start writing a blog post. If you do it one a week, one every two weeks, whatever you can. Make it consistent, and then make it so that it's not too burdensome. Then when you can do more, add on more. But then you're not going to stop being consistent. You'll just start adding more. But once you start doing that, once you start writing content and writing it in a way that Google will like it, that search engine friendly, it's not that much harder to make a search engine friendly, but you got to know what to do to make it search engine friendly. Once you start doing that, people will start finding you naturally, organically on Google. That's going to generate leads, and I think that's incredibly, incredibly important for anyone who's trying to get business. So that would be my number one thing to do, and I also wrote a blog post on how to write blog posts that are good for both the reader and for Google. And uh, I can share that with you somewhere, wherever you want. Uh, maybe give it to uh, Linda. But I can that's put it in the what notes, Josh. Say. Josh, I'll put it in the yeah. notes. Okay. My tip to 
ask you this. Whenever you go to a, a meeting or any place, grab the business cards, go home, immediately um, ask them to join you on uh, LinkedIn. And then yeah. you can decide later if they should be put into your database. Good point, Lynn. Hey, Everybody, so amazing, amazing. Go ahead, Christina. Go ahead, Christina. Christina. I was just saying, use it as it's meant to be. Be social. Get out there and be responsive. Yeah. So everybody, amazing topics, and I love I love these conversations and these micro debates, and uh, you know I appreciate everybody coming on and and listening to us uh, for these. We're going to continue to have more, and, and if we had more bandwidth, uh, I know Linda and I and Alan and, and everybody that's on here would want to do more and more and more. Uh, so hopefully we'll get more of these out as the more topics. Let us know what what's working for you, what's not working for you, what you like, what you want to hear about, what you want to talk about. Let's all be social. I'd like to have a thousand webcams up here at one point in time of everybody being a panelist and just get into right. a, a, an awesome conversation right. and topic. Um, so I'd Matt, like to take the time no, to notice, thank out. Notice James Milner. He's been adding a hashtag here. He's doing a great job. Yeah, it, it, James, you are uh, you. You get the tweet trophy of the day. Um, James Milliner, if you don't know him, uh, you can find him on there, Boone CRE, uh, on uh, Twitter. Uh, hashtag's going to be CRE uh, Breakfast Club. Uh, just tweet that out, and you can uh, find one of us in there in that tweet line. I want to thank Alan Buchanan, uh, Andrew Bermudez, uh, James Milner, Joshua Lyons, uh, Kristen Cohen, uh, Christina Cohen, sorry, <laughs> Linda Day Harrison, Lynn Drake, uh, Steve Wayne and uh, for everybody else that's putting this on. Again, these aren't easy to put on, but we love doing them. We love doing them for everybody else. I got a lot of thank yous and people are um, saying things. Next time we'll be talking about deal automation, uh, some automation tools and some other tools you can use and we found out that have worked uh, to tie in uh, to generate more leads, uh, what to do when we get those leads, and then we're going to be talking about uh, designations, social clubs, uh, and all kinds of cool stuff. So uh, everybody's going to be back on for this one. So thank you all for coming on. These are awesome and amazing, and I really appreciate you taking your time out of the day. I know you don't have much time, but to give it to everybody that's on this call is, is amazing. So thanks for being social, and we'll talk to you soon. Is it thank recorded, you. Matt? Bye. What's that, Linda? Is it recorded? Yes, it is recorded. Okay. As she asked. It's recorded. I'll get everybody the recording as soon as I possibly can. Perfect. Thanks, well, everybody, for then, all your Thank you. Then, and then everybody can curate Thanks, it. Yes, yeah, then we curate it. That's exactly right. There you go. Thanks That's the word guys. of the day, curation. Thanks, right. Alan. Love Bye. you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.